Hey guys, welcome to Rinse to Drive. If you've tuned into the channel before, you've seen this uh, this, this uh, truck that I'm going to show you here. It started out life as a very heavily 3D printed King of Hammer style truck inspired very much by the G-Made GOM. Now, one of the problems, if, if you're like me and you like doing your own thing, you know, the pre-built RC cars are super cool, lots of fun, but you like making them your own, you like wrenching on them, you like doing your own thing. The problem with 3D printing is that it offers so much potential, the thing you figure out very, very quickly is that durability is a very, very serious problem, especially compared to modern RC cars, because modern RC cars are so durable. And it's almost impossible to print parts that are on par with uh, modern RC cars unless you make some serious compromises and make some adjustments to allow for, for all the problems with 3D printing. Now, in my experience, the, the areas where you're going to have problems are your axles, suspension arms, um, chassis parts, like parts that are going to have to take a heavy, heavy impact. That's where you're going to have your most problems, as you would probably expect. Now, the thing about that is, is that, is that there, there are some cures, and this, this front bumper here you can see, this is made of TPU. It's a very flexible plastic. As you can see, it bends like crazy. Lots of flexibility there. It's really, really strong. This stuff is durable, guys. The problem, as you can see, it's a little too flexible. For a lot of parts like there's definitely things that you'd like to make out of this for the durability it's got a little too much flex like let's say suspension arms if this was a suspension arm way too much flex right like ah, that moves way too much to make a suspension arm and that's you know kind of like a suspension arm for a big car right so that's a problem but as you can see this whole cage is uh, made of tpu except these red parts and they should be i was just too lazy to print them you make a cage out of it very very durable and what this has become is a mod for the Traxxas TRX4 chassis and I decided to go that route uh, I mean kinda not uh, not so much out of giving up because uh, the version I built was fairly durable it, you know it didn't break on a whim but for sure you had to be nice to it and uh, and this is a uh, it's kind of in line with uh, with that first iteration in that I'm still running these Red Cat XR247 axles on a Traxxas chassis with the Traxxas 2-speed transmission and that handy dandy 3D printed body. So the, to me this is kind of, I hope, the best of, of all the worlds. You got a really good chassis, super durable, and You've got some solid axles that are that are uh, very affordable, very durable. The Red Cat the Red Cat XR247 axle kit, which I'm not sure if you can get anymore. I know it's definitely hard to get. is uh, is very affordable. I got this for uh, for 110 Canadian, and these are high quality axles for 110 bucks. Like the the internals of these axles would cost you real money. You know they're they're simply not available for cheap. So. The nice thing about this is that obviously you can run Traxxas TRX4 axles if you are so inclined, and that's not a bad way to go. The, the only downside is that they're portal axles, which makes your truck sit up really high, gives you really good ground clearance, but in terms of speed, like a, a hammer truck, it's kind of a combination between crawling and speed. If you run the TRX4 axles, you're kind of going more for crawling, a little less for speed. Um, and I mean, that's a, a vast, vast generalization. Like, obviously they're going to work. And if you want to see TRX4 axles in a, in a bouncer, check out Exocaged RC. Uh, he made a custom bouncer with a metal uh, tube chassis, TRX4 axles. Uh, I think it's a TRX4 transmission, if I recall correctly, because I believe he's still got the full locking, unlocking, the whole schmozzle all, all hooked up. And the abuse that he puts that bouncer through before those axles finally break and I, I think it was uh, December or early January that he finally broke an axle and he just broke the housing he didn't break any anything of substance but uh, finally broke one and if you watch the abuse that he put that bouncer through I mean it's impressive like the thing goes fast you know it's it's about 25 miles an hour which in a in a bouncer or a, or a crawler type setup that's really fast 
I mean, it jumps like, you know, it, he's jumping it, big air, the whole works. Like he abuses it way more than I abuse stuff and it holds, it holds up to it, you know, tremendously. If you ever watch Kevin Talbot's channel, he's the king, in my opinion, of beating on a TRX-4. Like, he, he loves the TRX-4, and he abuses those trucks something awful. He runs high-power brushless setups and, and jumps it and bounces it and knocks it off things like willy-nilly. You know, if you want to see what a TRX-4 is capable of, watch those guys. They, they, they put them through some abuse. So that TRX-4 chassis... The TRX-4 platform, super durable. It is really, really impressive. And like I said, with this setup, you can for sure run the TRX-4 axles with some wideners, and it'll work just fine. Uh, with these XR247 axles or some uh, some Chinese Wraith axles, you can just uh, plug those straight in and away you go. The only thing you got to be careful of is if, if you're running that uh, TRX-4. Uh, transmission and whatnot, you got to make sure that the front axle has enough offset on the pumpkin that the drive shaft is close to straight because it will interfere with the with the uh, with the skid plate. It'll touch if if you don't have enough clearance there. So keep that in mind. And uh, everything else on this has worked out pretty darn painlessly. The back suspension, the links are the Traxxas links, so nothing really exciting to show there. The front suspension only required me to lengthen the third link and come up with a custom panard bar link and the only thing that's noteworthy is that if you run the xr247 axles and i'm going to try and show this but it's kind of hard to show with the tires on the uh the lower link mount is lower than a trx4 axle so it actually the axle is actually lifted up higher and the shock mount is actually higher so you end up with the axle sitting higher and the shock moving it down more so you, you end up with a lot of lift and I put in some droop springs in these shocks to uh, to suck them up a little bit and have it sitting a little more close to flat because I wanted this to have some speed. The result is that the suspension is quite firm but uh, I've just uh, I've just fired it up a couple times inside and it uh, you know it pulls the front wheel and it, it lifts the back wheel under braking and and it uh, it definitely uh, doesn't handle you know spectacularly as you would expect but that, that stiff suspension actually seems pretty good. It's, uh, for speed, I think the setup is gonna work fairly well. For crawling, we'll see. I'm actually running this 5200 kV 3650 motor in it right now, because it's, uh, it's kind of the only 3650 I have kicking around uh, kind of up for grabs. That's a lot of RPM for this setup, and it cogs like crazy in high gear, but in low gear, it actually seems pretty good and I'm guessing I'm just gonna go on a limb and say it's probably in low gear with, with the Traxxas transmission geared for somewhere in the vicinity of 15 to 20 miles an hour is my best guess just looking at it like it definitely has some has some speed it might even be geared for more guys because uh, to be honest I was, I was kind of surprised you know kind of the way it drove just farting around inside with a couple of passes up and down the hallway but um, Obviously, that is not the ideal setup. That's way too many KVs for this setup. That is, it's it's silly, and I'm definitely going to order a, a lower KV motor to uh, you know to run this kind of more quote unquote properly. Now, the upside is with a 2S battery, this you know it's it's kind of ideal if if I if I want to run it for speed, just you know bombing across a desert type uh, scenario, you know bouncing across some some small rocks and things like that. Uh, for crawling, the problem is you can't really gear it down enough to crawl effectively. It's, it's not going to have much oomph in the crawling department. The way this setup works is you've got the front uh, body mount attached like a, like a bumper mount. So it's, it's attached to the chassis here. And then I use zip ties to attach it to the, to the cage. I switched the cage to use just a crossbar on the front to make it easier to attach to things and then it just flips up so you got a flip up cage so easy for uh for for minor working on or putting the battery in or whatever and also not difficult to remove if you want to do some some hardcore wrenching because it's, it's kind of in the way if you're if you're doing uh, real work so you just cut the zip ties and put a couple of fresh ones on when you're done then it's got TPU body mounts on the back, shock mounts back here as you can see, and you use body clips to hold that on. And I added this brace on the back to absorb a little more oomph if, if you have some big hits. And it's again just uh, attached to a bumper mount 
with this big beefy uh, brace here and it's got this uh, this clip that you just latch over the top to hold the uh, to kind of you know loosely hold the, uh, the the cage in place there seems to work pretty well we'll see it'll you know it got to test it in anger you can still put a bumper of some sort on if you're so inclined or a, or a tire mount or whatever because it's got these standard 43 millimeter spacing uh, bumper mount holes and what I'm thinking is uh, you could easily model up something that comes up let's see here that comes up and over and maybe latches to the top of the of the cage there and you have a spare tire on it and you could even just pivot it over to lift lift the cage uh, you know a little bit clunky maybe but uh, you know if you want the tire on the back that's still totally doable you could even replace this with something that's uh, a little more oriented to, to putting a tire on there you know all pretty simple if you if you have any basic 3d modeling skills I might come up with something somewhere along the way we'll see the other option is to modify this cage a little bit which I haven't done just because so far the I just wanted to see how this would work and eh, I mean so far so good and the upside to this setup is that any impacts on the back like if it's cartwheeling it's going to hit the chassis which is very very strong the cage is going to absorb you know kind of light impact and you know overall I think it should be pretty durable my big concern is the shock mounts but as you can see TPU got some of these made up super durable so I'm going to test out these PLA ones to see how tough they are but I'm all, I've got the TPU waiting in the wings the only downside with the TPU and you've probably heard me talk about this in the past is that uh, screws don't cut threads very well and it's very flexible so there's two things you need to worry about when you mount your shocks potentially the screw can pull out it's going to take some pretty serious oomph to pull out a screw but it, it you know it's a it's a small concern these tabs are, are going to be really tough but there's some flex there right so you're definitely going to, going to want to run a cross brace which uh, I'm going to I'm going to come up with one and include it but uh, like a metal crossbar or something would probably work really really well so that's something to consider but once you go to TPU um, shock mounts you're basically laughing now if you're running TRX4 sport shock mounts that are already kind of set up for for goodness you should be laughing the only thing I'm not too sure about is the front one that I'm having trouble showing the front one here you can see that uh, there's your uh, your panard bar mount this is actually forward of the stock TRX4 panard bar mount so the stock TRX4 one would be roughly in line with uh, with this back post here so it's it uh, it should be you know a, a ways farther back there but with this axle it, the whole thing is kind of shifted forward the, the axle sits forward a little bit more than the TRX4 one so I had to move it so that the panar bar mount was in was in the right spot now I think I'm not 100% sure but if you have some stock TRX4 sport uh, shock mounts you can probably just mount the panard bar to the front like outside the shock mount run the screw in and it's probably very very close to the right spot I'm not hundred percent sure you'll have to check that out but uh, if you don't want to use 3d printed that is a way to go then you only have to use the 3d printed roll cage if you are so inclined alrighty and as you can see the roof piece is off right now I just wanted to leave it off for uh, for easy uh, display purposes of the goodness oh the battery box is the stock TRX 4 one I think you can see it there there's the there's the the uh, the, the latchy part and the batteries in there fits total totally fine this crossbar goes across it to add a little more uh, a little more stiffness a little more holding it in place this rear 3d printed cross brace is uh, kind of goofy and I made a, little, a small miscalculation I thought that the shock mounts actually sat in the rear position there's two two shock mount positions forward and rear I thought they sat in the rear but they don't they actually sit in the, in the forward stock which uh, which means that I modeled up some of this stuff with some faulty geometry the nice thing is that that actually lets you use the uh, the battery tray as a screw in point for one of the one of the shock mount screws and then all you need is uh, is another attachment point in the rear which I uh, am just in the process of finishing up for uh, for that rear cross brace stiffener thingy and you can use the Traxxas one if you're so inclined so if you have a bunch of Traxxas parts kicking around like I do you have that option if you don't that's why I've done a 3d modeled one the uh, the floor pan that the ESC is mounted on 
right here is just a little TPU floor pan that I made up just specifically to mount the CSC because I needed some place to put it. The Traxxas floorboards are uh, slightly too wide. So if you want to take some stock Traxxas floorboards and cut them a little bit narrower, you can use those and have fully functioning floorboards. And they actually sit really nicely. As you can see, hopefully, the floorboards go kind of roughly from here to here. So they they actually sit pretty, pretty nicely. I've, I've, I've just, you know, held them loosely in place to see. And they, they sit in place pretty well for this uh, for this body, for this roll cage. So if you want to use those stock ones, you can for sure cut them, narrow them a little bit, and then uh, and put them in place. And it's, it's going to work just fine. I'm trying to decide if I'll do that or not because I, I have two sets. Uh, one that are, that are installed in a truck that I'm running and one that are uh, kicking around because I needed uh, I need the uh, transmission mount and stuff and the whole set was uh, very affordable from Jenny's RC as you've probably heard me talk about so I do have that kicking around I might mod them and I'll show you if I do but it's really easy all you got to do is is, uh, is cut them narrower a little bit of measuring and you'll be laughing I, I don't think that's the hardest mod you know, just with a rotary tool with a cutting disc or something, and just take your time, it'll be fine. I think that's it. These are super cheap shocks, uh, nothing to get excited about. As I said, the only problem, this setup's a little bit stiff. Um, I'm, I'm not 100% uh, sure, we'll have to see. I think it might work okay, but um, not too sure. The only thing I don't have uh, from a stock tier X4 is the shocks, so I'm not sure how well they'll work with this. I think they'd work okay, because you can probably... Uh, turn the adjusters down, add some preload, and uh, and and, get, and stiffen up that suspension a little bit. But I'm not going to swear to that because uh, again, I don't have them. Not 100% sure. The uh, in general crawler shocks tend to be quite soft, so uh, I suspect that if anything, they'll be a little on the soft side. Uh, but yeah, that's that's this bad boy, and there will be some running video hopefully you know not too far down the road but winter has been really nasty where I live the conditions outside are just atrocious right now it's it's, uh, it's so insanely slippery it's it's like a recipe to fall down if you even go outside so not the most motivating type scenario to go to go beating on your RC car but uh, one of these days there'll be some running videos and uh, not just wrenching videos but uh, yeah that's the latest update on this bad boy and this one I'm pretty stoked on because with that TRX4 platform you know you're not gonna break a bunch of stuff uh, like running stuff and then really with a TPU printed cage it's gonna be really durable guys like that cage is, is really not gonna break if it's uh, if it's made out of TPU so I kind of think this is a winner like if you, if you like this setup and you want to run a, a, a hammer style truck and you, and you like what I've done here I'm pretty sure you can uh, pop this on a TRX4 no problem and you're good to go you're cooking with gas and uh, like I said if this holds up really well I probably will be doing some mods to get it to fit the chassis slightly better because obviously the rails in the back here are very slightly too long uh, if you're inspired by this, you can for sure cut off the Traxxas rails, shorten them slightly, and then just uh, just use a, a brace to mount the uh, the back points here onto, and, and kind of give it a finished look, uh, or just leave it hanging out. It did, you know, it it it's not the end of the world. Or even cut them way shorter. Uh, you know, there's some options. Uh, it depends what you want to do. Um, so yeah, there you go. So that is all. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Wrench to Drive, where we ask the eternal question, do you drive to wrench or do you wrench to drive?